speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. It's my pleasure to welcome Bob Bly back to the show. He is a returning guest, and he is a legend in the industry of copywriting, and he has authored so many books that if I were to read all the titles of all of his works, over a 100, it would be the entire episode today. So we won't do that, uh, but his latest work is entitled The Digital Marketing Handbook, and we're going to talk about how to get traffic to your website, how to convert people once they're at your website, and just have a more successful business. Bob, welcome back. How are you? Good. How have you been? Good, good. It's good to have you on the show, and you are coming to us from... Yep, and you're coming to us from New Jersey, right? Yes, I am. Excellent, excellent. Well, your latest work... Now, is this work really a departure? I know it's related, of course, from some of your other work, because it, it seems like really copywriting has always been your thing. But now you're... May, are you broadening a little bit? Is that uh, uh, what, I, well, what I'm doing? Is I say to people, I'm doing adjacent fields. First, I did it, started with copywriting. And mm-hmm. I said, hmm. then I went to content writing. Mm-hmm. Then I went to public relations, and now in the multi-channel world today, I did a book a while back on email marketing, and now I've done this one, the digital marketing handbook, which is about how to make your websites make money. Mm-hmm. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, let's talk about that. Take us through maybe in chronological order how that customer journey goes. I mean, it all starts really with traffic, right? Yeah, to, to simplify it, there's two major steps. Of course, there's more. There's two major steps. Number one, you have to know how to drive traffic to either your website or another of your pages on the website to a specific URL. And the book outlines at least a dozen methods to do that, and we can discuss some of them. There are probably, in in total, 20 methods, and there seem to be more invented every other week. So step one is you got to drive lots of traffic. Step two is you have to convert that traffic either to an opt-in to your list or to a sales lead for your service, or what I do mainly is for a purchase of your product online. Good stuff. So let's start at the beginning, and that is bringing people to your website. You got to get people there before you can do anything, right? Absolutely. Okay. How do, how do we drive traffic? You've got 12 broad methods that you outline, uh, but what are some of your favorites? Well, I have my favorites, and they're, they're, some of them are unconventional. Well, one of them is conventional. My favorite for, for pe- other people, people in who sell products online is affiliate marketing. And I think, and you know what that is. Basically I find someone who has a, an e-newsletter or that goes out to an audience that is somewhat similar to mine. And I approach him and I say, look, if you would offer one of our products to your list that you think is a good fit, and drive the traffic to my sales page, we'll give you a commission for that. And then also vice versa. Uh, I'll drive traffic to their sales page for their product. I'll recommend it in my newsletter or in an email, and they'll pay me a commission. So that's affiliate marketing. And the reason that, A, it makes sales, but B, everyone from their site who logs in and buys your product is added to your opt-in list. So it's a great way to grow your list and your revenue. So that is that is one of my favorite methods. Give us uh, two more, Bob. Okay. Some of them are, are very simple and basic. Online advertising, in particular, Facebook advertising and Google advertising, pay-per-click, are very uh, effective ways of driving traffic. 
they're not free. You know, affiliate marketing, your, your affiliate gets a percentage of the, of the sale, but you're not paying anything for that. No out-of-pocket expense. You have to buy advertising on f- Facebook and Google, and you have to know what you're doing. And I recommend to anyone who wants to do that, it's, it's in my book, but it's also for free on Facebook's website and Google's website. Look up their rules for advertising because they are somewhat restrictive, and I think you know, both of them. And, uh, you know, you have to know what they will accept and what they won't before you uh, submit your ad. Yeah. And, if, and if you don't make their standard, you know, they're not going to charge you for an ad they don't run, but they're going to say, you know, try, we're not going to run this. Try something else. Mm-hmm. So Google Ads, or that was that Google and Facebook, you said? Yeah, Google Ads, very good. Yeah. Facebook is good advertising. Mm-hmm. The other online advertising, there are a few others. Bing is is good. It, it's less expensive, you know, to test pay-per-click ads. Banner ads, not my favorite, but un, undeniably they can work if you're paying a reasonable price. And in addition to that, in e-newsletters, ads in other people's e-newsletters can work, especially mm-hmm. text ads. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's traffic. What's next when we get people to our website? I mean, there there is so much different philosophy on this. You know, I'm wondering, maybe it's a, uh, this is more of a copywriting question, but what is the latest thinking, Bob, about copywriting in terms of the general philosophy of it, the length of it. When you started, I'm, I'm guessing, and correct me if I'm wrong, that really the, that long form sort of sales letter, sales page was the thing. Is that still the way it is with people's short attention spans and so many distractions yes, nowadays? Yes, yes, but with a caveat. Mm-hmm. Long copy works when you are selling a product, either in print directly off the page or online directly, you know, that they can order online. There's no salesperson. You're not sending them to a retail store. They go on your sales page, and if they like it, they click, and they go to a shopping cart, and they give, they pay with PayPal or their credit card, and you make the sale. For that, long copy is consistently proven, in most cases, to outpull uh, short copy, especially for products that are either – complex or that have a big emotional element attached to it. For example, if you're selling a, a uh, health product, let's say you're selling a dietary supplement and it's a pill for prostate, that's an emotional issue. If you're a guy, I've never had it, but if you're a guy that has prostate, uh, benign prostate hyperplasia or, or prostate cancer, you're having a lot of problems. You're embarrassed by it. It hurts you. It interrupts your sleep. That's very emotional. And that takes long copy to pull them in and then convince them that your pill or supplement is better than the 40 others that they're getting advertising for. And that takes a lot of copy. And then you need to make your offer, state your guarantee, justify the price. So that's why most of these pages are long copy. Conversely, if you're doing, let's say, B2B marketing and you've done a white paper on uh, electronic asset recovery and you're offering it to potential clients, it's free. You don't need long copy to give away something free online. So you would have a you would drive traffic to a short landing page that has, you know, it explains the basic offer, has a few bullets of what they'll learn in it, and then a button they click to download it. Mm-hmm. So the answer to the question is, it depends. It depends, okay. but generally, the rule of thumb is, we used to use the term mail order. Now, of course, this isn't by mail. So we say direct response that sells products directly to consumers is often long copy. Mm-hmm. And B2B copy that generates leads instead of sales is, can generally be shorter copy. That's the rule of thumb. Good stuff. And so do you go into the design of the web page, like the look and feel of it? Do you want to address that or, uh, or the copy? Yeah, or I mean, you want to I, mean I, have a, I have a whole presentation I give sure. on doing uh, websites and sales pages. And I go, you know, in detail 
into it. Uh, we can't do that, all of that now, because we don't have a visual component here. But I'll, I'll give you a couple of tips that I think will be helpful. The problem with sales pages, person clicks on your sales page, and the first thing is you have a headline that makes a bold claim, and they don't know who you are. So right away, they're skeptical. So what we do to beat that, we use an extra element on the web, on the sales page, above the headline, usually in smaller type, often in italics and quotation marks, that is a, what we call a credibility prehead. So mine, on my websites for my products, before the headline, above the headline, it says, Bob Bly, author of 100 books, and the man McGraw-Hill calls, quote, America's top copywriter, unquote, now reveals dot, 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 and then it leads into the headline. So the, the credibility is immediately established. That's one tip. The other tip is a big mistake, especially for a longer copy sales page, is you read it and the marketer has put the click button, buy now, at the very end of the page. So you have to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. That will kill response. What's better is you have your buy now button multiple times throughout the page, also at the end, but also at the early and so you know they can find it right away because some people will come to it see what the product is they don't need to read your sales letter they said oh, i gotta have this and if they have to search for the button to order that's not helping right yeah yeah exactly okay so is it a, a one page site uh you know you used to see those a lot and i think you were behind a lot of those in uh you know the earlier days of the internet where it's like this one page site it's broken up it's got pictures testimonials information there's you know maybe three or four buy now buttons as you scroll down the page or is it a a site where you link around and go places or kind of a one page the the important thing is, now, in essentially it, a, a landing page is one page, but the term today, one page site, also has a, another meaning to many people. It's a traditional website that everything is on the home page. But yes, this is, these are the, what you're talking about. It's one page. It's usually, it's usually narrower than a full screen. It looks like a sales letter. And it reads linearly, and it talks about only one topic, which is the product that you want to sell and the problem that it cures or solves. And the important thing is there is no navigation on that site. Your only choice is to click to order or to leave the page. Okay, good. So is that – should this be someone's, you know, or some company's – only website, or are you strictly talking about this landing page uh, as a separate site that one has for specific sales offers? The landing page is what we call a micro or mini site, and it is for specific sales offers. Companies should also have what we call their home on the web, where you can find them, and that is a traditional website. And in mine, there's a lot of stuff going on there, but the, among other things, y there are links to all my sales pages for my individual products. But you, you do need a central hub. Also, the central hub site, that's the one you operate, you optimize for search engines. And it's very difficult to optimize a sales page because Google rates them low. But Google, if your site has a lot of content, your main site, you, you can get it rated higher. Good, good stuff. Okay, so for SEO, the main site, and then for specific offers, the, you know, micro the, site. Site, the micro site. Yeah. Okay, okay, good stuff. Bob, what else do you want us to know? Two things. Number one, we live in a multi-channel marketing world today. And the, the some people will, will say, I just use Facebook. Uh, I just use ad, online ads. I just use sales pages. But the most successful marketers have in integrated multi-channel programs or campaigns that combine multiple media. 
For example, we're finding that one of the best ways to drive traffic to a sales page or a website is to send out an oversized postcard. It's print. It's not. It's not digital. Yeah, good old, good yeah. old-fashioned direct mail. Yeah, and one thing that is also, for example, a lot of dietary supplements. I mentioned prostate are sold online, but smart marketers know that another medium that works well for supplements is half-page newspaper ads. So a, a good marketer or one who wants to max, increase, maximize the revenue does not stick with one channel. They test different channels, and the ones that don't work, they drop by the wayside, and what works, you do more of. Yeah, okay. Good old newspaper. Wow, I'm I'm so surprised to hear that nowadays, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people are. Stuff. People people yeah. are, and you know what they'll tell me? Like, my kids will tell me, Dad, no one reads the newspaper. I said, really? Yeah. No one? Yeah. Then why do they make it? Yeah, yeah. Well, li- listen, my neighbor reads the newspaper. I see it out here every day on the sidewalk, you know, <laughs> so I, I know somebody's reading it. Yeah, okay, good, good stuff. All right, what else do you want us to know about the the site you talked about driving traffic um, a very important point yeah okay good if someone's on your site as i said they can either leave the site or buy the buy the product but if they don't want to buy the product at least when they leave the site you want to capture their name and email address and there are different ways to do that but one is simply called the pop under and you've seen this you're not buying the product, you're leaving the site, and a window pops up and says, wait, don't leave yet without claiming your free gift. And to get the free gift, usually it's content, like a special report, but it can be something else. You have to put in your name and your address. Now, I've driven, I've paid money to drive that traffic. Some of that traffic has purchased product. Some of it won't fill in that pop on there and I've lost them. But there's a large percentage that will fill in that form and give me their email address. So A, I'm building a list, but B, they were interested enough to come to a page on that topic. They now are entered into an autoresponder email series, three emails, five emails, seven emails, that upgrades them to say, hey, you know, go back on the sales page. You missed this, you missed that. Don't you want to feel better? Don't you want to be able to prostate? Don't you want to be able to pee like a fire hose? So they're upsold, and typically an autoresponder email series sent to people who opt in but didn't buy will increase total conversion rates between 10 and 30%. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Bob, if we've gone over some of the website stuff, and before we wrap it up today, I, I just love to give our listeners some insights into your truly legendary copywriting skills. You know, this is such an important art. It's one that I never really learned, but I am fascinated by it because I tell you, when I read copy, I I mean, I just want to buy everything. (laughs) (laughs) You know, when you read good copy, how do people do that? I mean, what is, what are some of the, just the sort of fundamental secrets of great copywriters? I could give you sort of special formulas that are not the fundamentals. But the, the, the fun, but I'll start with, I'll do a couple of fundamentals. One is people always say, I got, you know, it, like in ad agencies, we got to get a product briefing. You got to study the product. Most important thing in your ad or your promotion is not the product. It's the prospect, the person you're selling to. You should know at least as much about the prospect as you do about the product. And what do you want to know? You want to get inside their mind. You want to know what keeps them up at night. What do they want? What are they afraid of? What's their biggest problem? My friend Don Houtman, who's a copywriter, says, ask or find out, and there's, there's a formula for doing this, what is the thing that keeps them up at night with worry? Today could be COVID, could be recession, could be whipsaw volatility in the stock market, could be other things depending on the person. Okay, so you understand, you get inside their head, you understand their perspective, their point of view, then what? Then you, your copy starts with the prospect, not with the product, as is done in Madison Avenue. Mm-hmm. That does not work with direct response. You start with the prospect, 
you say things because you said you you said yourself you get into their head. So now you understand the conversation they're having with themselves in their mind about the problem the product solves or about the product. And you enter into that conversation and your copy starts with that. I mean, one classic was a sales letter selling a subscription to Psychology Today. And the, head, the beginning line was, do you close and lock the bathroom door even when you're the only one home? <laughs> yeah. and, and there was another one for a, uh, a supplement, an energy supplement that began – are you sick and tired of feeling sick and tired? You're entering with what they're thinking. And once you get them, you say, the guy says, or the, girl, the woman says, ah, these guys understand me. Then you say, but we've now got an answer. We've got a solution. And then you transition from the problem to the solution. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you one other. Mm-hmm. The, you asked me, why are these sales letters so long? Mm-hmm. Because if someone's a serious buyer, people say, no one reads that copy. Well, the people who are not buyers, non-buyers, non-prospects, yeah, they don't read the copy. Mm -hmm. But people who are serious prospects and end up buying or want to buy something, they read it. And the reason is the copy is long. The primary reason is you have to have a lot of proof. You know that trial lawyers don't go into court with just enough proof to prove their case. What is this expression they use? An abundance of mm-hmm. proof. Right. And you have to have, just like a trial lawyer in your copy, an abundance of proof so much that the prospect says, wow. Even if they don't read every word of it, they look at it, it goes on and on. And they go, well, these guys are the real thing. They know what they're talking about. I'm going to get this. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good, good stuff. Bob, you have a little gift for our listeners, right? Yeah, if you go to... This URL, if you have a pencil handy, www.b is in boy, L Y, my last name, Bly, dot com forward slash digital, you can get the first copy, you can download the first chapter of my digital marketing handbook for free. And I think you'll find it useful. Excellent. Bob Bly, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely a pleasure, as always. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, HartmanMedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go Go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.